Say Russia and people will tell you about the Red Square, the Kremlin or the KGB. But say Stas Naman and... Pardon? I have no idea. Some religious cult? Stas Naman are very much a cult, though not a religious one and not in Australia. <laughs> they've been dubbed the Soviet Beatles. In 20 years of playing together, they've sold 40 million records, though for most of that time their music was banned. Our rock and roll was forbidden uh, for all the time, even two years ago. Only two years ago we had permission to perform and to go abroad. Only two years ago, Soviet writers were comparing Western rock with AIDS. Now, riding the waves of Glasnost and Perestroika, Stas Naman is the first Russian rock band to benefit from the new era of tolerance under Mikhail Gorbachev. For sure, because of Perestroika, because of Gorbachev's coming, and you know, we have more freedom now in Moscow and in Soviet Union. Stas Namin is the group's founder, now their manager. It doesn't mean that the government are helping, is helping the development of rock and roll and so on. Even now on television and radio it's almost forbidden. Australia is the last stop on a world tour that's taken the group to America, Britain and Japan. Their visit here was arranged by a local Russian family, also in the entertainment business. Of course, we're taking the risks, but I strongly believe if the Australian public will see this group, they'll love it. Music is in Viktor Jamez's blood. He left the Soviet Union because he couldn't play the music he wanted. But Stas Naman say they have no intention of following in his footsteps. I'm not sure that you go, you leave your motherland and just where you, all your friends and you was born. That's why for us it was impossible just to leave the country, to leave the place uh, where we were born and we had so many friends around. You know, it's difficult maybe to explain. Their country, and what it went through during the Second World War, hold an almost religious significance for the group. The Soviet Union lost 20 million people, and it's hardly if you can find any family who wouldn't suffer after that war. And ask Stas, ask myself, or another family who didn't suffer, and we'll say yes. And that's why it is important. Western bands have you been most influenced by? I think because of Beatles and Rolling Stones, we, get, we began our music. What do you think of Mick Jagger? He's my hero. It's really very difficult to be alive as a creative person, as a superstar, for such a long period of time. You play guitar? Yeah, he plays drums. This is my favorite guitar player. <laughs> by chance, the day Stas Naman arrive in Sydney, Mick Jagger is leaving for Adelaide. But though his band turns up, Mick the Lips does not. What sort of reaction do you think you're going to get from the Australian audience? We'll see. <laughs> Why did you come? Because I got free tickets, so I took a tank. <laughs> We sing about everything, about love, politics, philosophy, just life. Our songs are more philosophical, but we have different groups. Some of them are very controversial, very political. Our songs is more about the phenomena of 
um, sort of fascism, like Stalin. <laughs> The words of this song, in rough translation, go something like, Stalin used to be a god whom everyone prayed to. Now no one trusts him anymore. But he didn't die, he's alive and waiting for his time. And he's standing in the forest, thirsting for blood. Oh, lovely. Oh, great. Yeah. Uh, it's a, just a pity the publicity was so, so bad, you know. I was in a band a long time ago and, and we used to get as much publicity without any help, you know, and they've come out here, the first Russian band in Australia, they've had no... It doesn't appear that they've had any help. Very, very good. I can't, can't complain. No complaints at all. I'm back in the USSR We don't know how lucky you are, boy Back in US, back in US, back in USSR 